Hey everyone, welcome back to my shop. Uh, last spring, my friend Alan gave me a walnut tree that was in his yard. It was quite old, parts of it were rotten, there were carpenter ants inside of it, and it needed to come down. Uh, there were some crotch pieces that were dry enough to go into my solar kiln. They spent about six weeks in there uh, this fall, and they've been in my shop now for about a month. Uh, so I thought it'd be fun to make a kind of a George Nakashima style coffee table. Uh, so I need to dig those out and grab some other bits. Of course, the piece I want's on the bottom. So here's our slab. I'm just having a little peek at it. There's some bark inclusion right here in the crotch area. And the figuring is quite nice. There's some cracks at the bottom. Bark is still attached. But because of the bark inclusion here, I think I'm going to use the other side. And I don't think the figuring is any better on one side or the other. So it should look pretty, pretty nice. So that's going to be the top. And then I got some pieces here. Uh, which will go horizontally on the floor and then underneath the table to give it support. Uh, and this piece will be a vertical piece. Clear as mud. The top's going to be the last thing I do. I need to get an 18 inch piece out of here or a 16 inch piece. I've got my piece all squared up. It's smooth on both sides. Uh, it's still a little bit long. I need to cut it to length. Uh, but I also have this line going right through it. This is the very center of the tree or the pith. And I don't want it there. So I am going to keep planing it to get rid of that. Uh, it's just a little bit too tall for me to cut on my bandsaw. So back to the planer for a few more minutes. Still a little line. The pith is gone though. Well, a little bit. I don't think I want to take it down anymore though. So oh, let's make it an inch and a half. There we go. I still have some cracks in it. I hate to say it, but I think I'm going to use some epoxy on that to fill the cracks and the knots. I've got those pieces built up. I cut this to length. Uh, it's 16 inches. And I milled these to inch and a half by three inches. I don't know that I need this one here, so I'm not sold on it yet. So while I decide on whether I need this piece down here, I could flip it like that so you don't really see it. Uh, what I need to do though is do a half lap here for the piece to fit in there. I'm going to cut my half laps here at the table saw. And how I'm going to do that is I've got my blade pretty close to an inch and a half, which is, these are three inches. And I'm gonna pass this piece, past the blade, I'll rotate it 180, go back across, and then just slowly raise the blade until the, whatever's left in the middle disappears, and then I know I'm in the right spot. To cut this half lap, I used this little jig. Uh, it's from Hongdui Tools, and I got it from Banggood, uh, a Chinese website, and uh, it works pretty good. Uh, I did a more in-depth video about it uh, on the last video I did, which was uh, using a soap finish on a white oak stool, uh, but I go into that a bit more if you're interested, and I'll leave a link to this down below. But uh, this should fit nicely. Because this piece is so tall, I'm not so comfortable running it through the, the blade on the table saw. So I think I'm going to mark it with a marking gauge and just chop it out with maybe the bandsaw and use some chisels to clean it out.
This morning I ran to Woodcraft. I got myself a one inch dowel. I laid it up here against the horizontal piece with my angle finder and looks like 15 degrees looks pretty good. So I'm going to go with that. I've got this little jig here. I've set that to 15 degrees. So I need to mount this in my end vise uh, so that it's nice and flush because this requires a nice flat surface. Well, I had the jig set up. I drilled a block here at the same 15 degree angle and this will mount to the bottom side of the slab and receive the one inch dowel. To fill all the cracks in the knots, I'm using the Total Boat tabletop epoxy with some black mica powder in it. I use the tabletop epoxy because it dries overnight rather than days for the deep pour epoxies to dry. The epoxy is all done. It took the one main pour and then a couple of touch-ups. I also made these blocks to attach the vertical piece to the slab, but I don't want to see them. And you'd see these and really I'm overthinking it. So I'm getting rid of those and I'm just going to use the figure eight fasteners. I think I'm ready to flatten the slab. So I've got my big plane here, but let's do it on the CNC. Uh, I like using hand planes, but not that much. The tool path I gave the CNC was to go down a, a quarter of an inch over three passes. And it took about 30 minutes to do. I found another use for this, my handy scraper, which has taken off that area between the sapwood and the bark. Uh, it worked really well. Uh, but this is the top. I ran it through my drum sander just a couple of times just to get rid of some of the bigger machine marks. Uh, but I'm ready to sand it, so I'm going to take it outside. I'll run through the grits between uh, 80 and 220. And at some point in there, I will water pop it just once. If I don't do that, when you put the Rubio on there, you'll actually see the path that the CNC took. I want to do this first because I want to give it 36 hours to dry, and then I will put uh, some Rubio maintenance oil on it, which will give it a bit more sheen and depth. Hey, no, no, don't eat that, dummy. Off you get. Hey, don't do that. <laughs> Uh, I like Rubio Monaco for walnut, cherry, stuff like that, uh, darker woods. I don't like it on lighter woods. I don't like any oil-based finish on lighter woods because it just tends to amber the wood, and some people like that finish, but I don't. Uh, so 
I'm still looking for an alternative. I've got a little bit of a wobble I want to take care of. Uh, let's try the finish plane first. Hmm. Let me try to clamp this differently. There we go. I glued the top piece on earlier and cut it to a rough length. So I'm just going to put it in the little socket. And I know it's a bit long, so we're way high there. So I'll just ease up on it. Nearly there. Ooh, just a little bit more. There we go. Round two with a Rubio. It's been a couple of days since I put the Rubio on the tabletop, so I'm going to go ahead and do the maintenance oil now. And I did this coupon uh, a long time ago, and you can kind of see, I think it's on your left here, would be with the maintenance oil and the Rubio without the maintenance oil on your right. And uh, it adds, it takes it from like a satin or sorry, it takes it from a matte finish to a satin finish and just gives it a little bit more depth, maybe a little bit more color. So I like using that. Just like Rubio, this goes uh, a long way, a little, a little goes a long way. Oop, too much. Looks like I'll be doing the sides. And just like Rubio, you wipe it off before it sits for 15 minutes. Well, it's done. And it looks wonderful. It's hard to go wrong, though, with a slab that looks that, that good. Uh, you know, there's so much curl and figure in it. Uh, yeah, I don't think you could go wrong. I'm kind of conflicted about the base. Uh, I, I like it, but... It's not mine. It's somebody else's design, and I just copied it off the internet. Uh, I, I love George Nakashima's work. It's beautiful, clean, uh, simple, and I chose this one because I'm not a great woodworker, and this was one I thought would be the simplest one to, to do. So 
Uh, I will certainly use that maybe as a base and start developing something that I like from that. Uh, if you have any questions, though, please list them down below. That kind of wraps this up. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.